Sometimes it takes a lifetime to become a billionaire. You have to marry a celebrity to finally someone recognize you are a fantastic artist. Alright, welcome back on Laughing Museums. My name is Cedric and thanks for watching Laughing Museums. Um, I was in Saint-Tropez a couple of days ago to see an exhibit of uh, the fantastic uh, artist Nadia Leger. The name of the exhibit is Colors of Nadia. Um, I wanted to see this one because first I didn't know the work of Nadia Leger. I heard about her really when I was studying the poetry of Elsa Triolet, which was the uh, uh, Love of the life of Aragon. Aragon is also a writer will, um, which produced a fantastic book on uh, Mati, so everything is kind of linked and a little bit linked here on the Riviera where I am in Nice because uh, that fantastic uh, Nadia, and I forgot her original name, uh, Kodosievich from Belarus is, and oh, uh, hi to my friend from uh, Belarus. Um, is um, spent the, life, uh, the, the late years of her life right here in the VAR. Um, so the next uh, ne next door, and uh, and the fact that I saw that exhibit in Saint Tropez, uh, the Musée de l'Annonciade is uh, fantastic. Congratulations to the curator of that uh, amazing exhibit. Um, it's funny because Fernand Léger, uh, that's some example of his work right there, is not of my favorite painters. It took me a while to appreciate. I like those painters, it took me a while to appreciate and then I kind of got into it a little bit. Uh, it was a superstar alive, so always when artists are like celebrated when their lifetime, I don't know, maybe I have the Van Gogh syndrome, like a good artist is a dead artist. I'm going to put some pages. Um, in my book uh, uh, on, on painting uh, that is coming out next year. And um, what interests me is that uh, this uh, Nadia uh, went all the way through Europe to arrive in France and clearly she had a fascination for Fernand Léger. Uh, she's been a painter from really early. She started to study with one of my uh, definitely hero, Casimir uh, Malevich. Uh, um, uh, black square, uh, black uh, square or quadrangle on, on white is uh, a piece that I keep fascinating me. There's a version in Beaubourg that I'm going to see from time to time. So she studied what we call a suprematism. Um, and um, she, you know that, that, that I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the life of that girl is just mind blowing, right? Students of Malevich. She became a communist, so she would be really engaged for the cause for uh, her entire life, from 33 to 80, to 50 years of being engaged for a minute, she fully supported. And I value commitment, okay? Uh, either you're right, you're wrong, history is judging you, whatever. What kind of commitment you have, I think when you're in the age, like 30 years old when she joined communism, I'm 29, when you choose it, you go forever, right? We're living in a world of people like changing their mind and stuff like that. If you adopt something, yes, you should be able to adopt it for life. Although she was married three, four times, it's kind of unclear right there. But the point is, uh, she's a fantastic, um, a fantastic uh, painter. Uh, she uh, did experiment a lot in suprematism. I'm showing you some examples right there, uh, which is. Uh, a movement of art which is literally moving me a lot. She was good at portraits, either uh, some questionable like this one. Uh, you recognize the guy, I put the name if you want. Uh, the first astronaut, really like that one as well. Uh, you got a Picasso, if I find this one, or maybe I'll take a picture of it when I was there. Um, uh, musicians, uh, remember music is the first form of art. Uh, philosophers were interested too and say we should educate the children to music first, no matter what, and um, and she experimented with Cubism as well, she was pretty good at it, I, I saw some really interesting work in the uh, Cubist uh, domain, which is not easy at all, she was really fantastic with uh, portrait, she got this fantastic palette 
of uh, colors. She was again carrying a message. She was carrying a message for women. She was really having this uh, 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 part of the history Europe, uh, Western Russia, whatever you call it, which is um, absolutely unique way of dressing yourself, like with a very strict kind of do and self-portraits are, are telling a lot about uh, people. And uh, uh, when Fernand Leger died in 55, she became like a billionaire. And what she did, she didn't use it to like increase her own career. She really paid homage to her husband and Hoppen Museum to his name and so really um, even if she had like a complicated uh, love life which no one is here to judge how complicated love life can be I think she also had like a very complicated uh, life as an artist and especially a female artist and that's what I'm making a point on Nadia Leger uh, today why because um, so she went through two wars, right? Uh, she actually entered the resistance uh, uh, during World War II on top of that. And uh, um, as an artist, she's always been seen like uh, the wife of her knowledge. And so that was difficult for her to pop up on the level. And there's this um, uh, a journalist who wrote an article in 71. The title was, Why Are There No Great Female Artists? Right? I love that article. Uh, from um, the American historian Linda Nocklin, art historian Linda Nocklin. I love that um, article because it was really, uh, of course, it's an ironic title. Um, it is really questioning the fact that, um, um, how can I say that? The fact that the gender was really an issue and that the entire history of fine hearts was made by men was decided by men, and really there was a will to exclude women from that domain, which is fine art. Yesterday, I was giving a, lot, a, a conference, and I was saying during that conference that um, even in Lascaux, in the origin of Kev Hart, we now make more studies proving that the, 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 the hands that they blow the pigment on were probably made hand by women or children, but the angle of the harm is also probably proving that the art, the negative of positive M, was actually realized, drawn, painted, you call it cave arting, <laughs> uh, by a woman artist. So women had a fantastic uh, place in art history. So they've been erased for political reason, for civilization reason, and we can't go back on that. We can debate on that forever. That's definitely not my point. My point is, um, uh, and the, the, the example of Camille Claudel, of Frida Kahlo are coming up, right? And today, uh, Frida Kahlo is kind of a, a superstar. You can see girls every time there's an exhibit uh, um, of uh, women empowering stuff like that. There's always some Frida Kahlo representation somewhere, and I think that's fantastic. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Frida Kahlo, it's still growing on me. Maybe one day I'm going to be really into, into her stuff. But... Um, um, so that's why Nadia is kind of a, a fantastic uh, uh, example of a late success, um, but still a beginning of a recognition and proving that still today the international scene uh, is um, it's still uh, um, very complex when it came to gender and uh, there's still a lot that is going on right now. I know friends of mine working for... Um, to empower women in, 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 in uh, art scenes such as uh, the movie business or literature or poetry or music and stuff like that, right? And I think it's fantastic. I hope maybe one day we're going to arrive at a non-gender kind of uh, art and that will not be something to even discuss about because uh, what will be the point about that? So massive discovery uh, with uh, Nadia Leger. Uh, go check it out and no matter what you do, don't forget, if you're not doing it with a smile, well, you're doing it wrong.